Hello stampers! Oh, I forgot to check the uh, audio, so let me just do one quick test. Yes, that's working. Hello stampers! It's Elizabeth, and it's Wednesday, April the 12th, 2023, and it is 7.30 p.m., and I am here with another free tutorial, and I'm just going to pull up on Facebook on my iPad so that I can see any comments. Hello, hello everyone. I have a thumbs up already. Yay! And I have eyes on me. I'm just going to check to see the eyes are on. They're on YouTube. A couple of eyes on YouTube. Hello, Emily. I can see you on YouTube. That's just the weirdest thing why I can see you on YouTube but not on Facebook. But that's okay because the um, quality of the video is better on YouTube than it is on Facebook. So weather is incredible. I actually went to work today, wasn't wearing a jacket. I did have a sweater on. So um, I know I think it's supposed to get a little cool again, but uh, we know spring is in the air. Spring is here and it is uh, a nice, nice time of the year, except for, uh, cutting the grass and taking care of outside. I used to love taking care of outside, used to love taking care of the garden and all that kind of stuff. Now it is just a chore. So I hope everyone is doing well and uh, and thanks for joining in. So uh, there's someone else, uh, a couple other people on, but um, they're hidden. I can't see who they are. So we're going to be playing tonight with Taco Fiesta. And I I think I might have mentioned this before, but um, I, when this was in the mini catalog, I really loved it. And but I never I didn't buy it. And I attended a paid for demonstrator event uh, about a month and a half ago. And uh, the creator Eric, oh, was Erica Serwin. This is her uh, stamp million dollar stamp set. Uh, she created it and I loved it. And she uh, did three projects with us and uh, I love them all. Uh, this is not one of the, sorry, this is one of the projects that she made that she, um, she uh, uh, taught us how to do. And uh, I really loved it. So that is what we're going to do tonight, playing with Taco Fiesta. And I'm going to show you the, the dies that are, not the dies, the stamps that are part of it. And there are no dies, but we, we will be doing some fussy cutting, but it's super easy to do. My bosses, uh, one of my boss's birthdays was last weekend. And the card we're doing tonight, I actually made for her and she uh, loved it. So if you have, if you know anyone that is, taco fiesta mexican themed it's a it's a cute stamp set um and if you're not aware i know emily has signed up this is one of the uh i'm doing a class in the mail and registration ends i think it's on the 18th of this month and the class will be uh in may and oh i'll tell you when I'll repeat this again in case anyone else comes on. The class will be May 27th and the registration deadline is April 18th. So it'll give me a chance to get everything ordered and uh, prepped. I've the, All the three cards are designed and um, ready to go. So I just have to, uh, once the registration closes, I'll put in the order and those that requested porch pickup, we will do porch pickup. So I'm going to go overhead. I'm going to show you the stamps that are involved and then we will get cracking. Alrighty, so this is the stamp set and again I didn't check the audio so I'm going to do that right now to make sure that the audio, uh, did the audio, yeah. Sometimes when I switch screens the audio doesn't go with me but this time the audio did. So this is the stamp set Taco Fiesta. And actually, one of the girls that uh, are ladies or stampers that signed up for the the class, she sent me a message. She said she loves the stamp set, so she was excited that I was going to do a class with it. So, <clears throat> with the cards that we card we're doing tonight and the three cards we're doing at the class, we will have used almost every stamp in this image. Every stamp and every audio is good. Thanks, Emily. Uh, we'll have used every stamp and every image. Uh, we might not use all of the little face images, but we will use every sentiment and every stamp. So I love it when 
you can show the versatility of one stamp set. So you spice up, you spice up my life. Your nacho average friend, I love that. Holy guacamole, it's your birthday. Spectacular, spectacular, and long time no taco. I love that sentiment, long time no taco. I, I think it, it's so cheesy, but I love it. And then we've got a pinata, we've got a lime, uh, not in this class, but in the pay for class, I'm gonna show you a technique, on a really neat technique for the uh, taco. We've got a bowl of nachos. We've got lar a large nacho, nacho, small nacho, uh, chili pepper, a big chili pepper, a little chili pepper, a cacti, cactus, a burrito, um, a hat, sombrero, and a an avocado. And then we've got a little cluster of candy. And then we've got a bunch of faces. So as I said, in, in the class that's coming up, uh, and then with today's card, we will have used every stamp in this set, which I, I love doing that. Okay, um, wanna see the card? So, Emily, since it's you and I, do you wanna see the card? I think it's so cute, we're changing it up just a little bit. So this is the card, and holy guacamole, and then on the inside, uh, it says it's your birthday, and we're gonna do something, uh, add something to it, which I did for my boss's card, and she really liked it, it was cute. And I don't know if you can see it, but, here we stamped tone on tone, they uh, spectacular, uh, spectacular, and all we stamped that all the way down. And then holy guacamole, and then we've got the little pinata, and we're also going to, oh, oh yeah, we're also going to uh, sparkle him up. We're going to make uh, with the wink of Stella, and then you've got all the candies in the background, so it's a little pinata. This is ribbon, this is the metallic ribbon, oops, sorry, it's carrying over. But we are going to be using this ribbon, this ribbon, it's retiring, and uh, but it's still current until the end of May, so I'm going to be using this one, and that's what I did with my boss's, uh, with my boss's card as well. All right, so let me just put that aside, because I, I'm, I'm, I, I want to leave it there so you guys can see it, but at the same time, I need space, so I'm moving it out. We need a piece of thick, thick basic white and it is the standard card size five and a half by eight and a half and it is scored at four and a quarter. We need, let me just make sure, two pieces of basic white, regular basic white that are five and a quarter by four and another one that's five and a quarter by four. And I'll show you why we need two. If, and I, I had to uh, adjust it. So if we were to stamp and color the, uh, the candy and the blends straight onto the card base, it bleeds onto the inside and I don't like that. So we have to adapt it a little bit. So um, you know, we need two pieces of basic white regular. You need a piece of scrap white, basic white for the pinata. And you need a cast off piece of the basic white. It can be basic white, basic white thick, it doesn't matter. Um, and for the holy guacamole. And we, I do this all the time. We are going to, the stamp is actually one stamp, but we're going to mask it off and do holy guacamole on the outside. And then it's your birthday on the inside. So we're gonna do that. And then you need color, you need a bunch of, of strips of cardstock. And we're using Gorgeous Grape, Melon Mambo, da, 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 Granny Apple Green. I had to think about what the color was. I was gonna say Pear Pizzazz, but I didn't use Pear Pizzazz because that's retiring. Granny Apple Green, and this is the Parakeet Party. Uh, and then this is the Daffodil Delight. And then, a gorgeous grape, then coastal cabana, and then again we're going to use the granny apple green, parakeet party, the daffodil delight, and then coastal cabana. These are all, uh, let me just make sure I got them right, half inch and 
I've just cut them long, but we will, I will be, we will be trimming them, but they have to be at least four inches wide. So they have to be at least four inches wide. I've cut them longer so that I have room so that I can trim them off. Okay. So, and the other thing you are going to need is your, no, not that one, your stylus shapes dies, and you're going to need this one, the, the second largest stylus shape dies. And the hint that I'm going to give you, and I'll repeat it again, is when we build the card and we run it through the stamp and cut and emboss machine to die cut out this, you need fairly clean plates. And the reason why I'm saying that is because I don't know if you can see, can you see um, here how it's not really clean? Like it's picked up some of the markings on my plate. And because this was a card I was giving to somebody, I didn't like it. So you make sure that you're, because this is uh, extra thick, this is like basic white, and then you've got all the strips of cardstock on top, makes it a little bit thicker. And so you're going to pick up a lot of the markings. You can see it up here too, from your plate. So you need fairly clean, fairly clean plates. All right, so I'm going to take my piece of basic white that is five and a quarter by four, and I am going to start layering on layering um, these on here. And I do have, I do have a adhesive sheet that I'm going to use. I'm going to start with the. You can use whatever color combination you so desire, but I'm going to start um, with the gorgeous grape. One thing you might want to do is dry fit them, and I should have done that. So I'm going to turn this upside down. I'm going to do that one, then I'm going to do that one and that one. The top one and the bottom one, if you want them the same width, you might have to trim them down a little bit, but I'm just going to test it here. And we've got the gorgeous grape. This is a great way to use up. This one doesn't look like it's straight. Great way to use up cardstock, strips of cardstock, if you have any. Uh, and then parakeet, uh, sorry, Grand Apple Green, and then parakeet party. Uh, and then there's the, so here we are. And so when I get to the top, the top one, I'm going to have to trim it off a little bit because it's not quite. Uh, the right height, but just so you know that the, one of them you may have to trim down on the side and on the left and right. And the key is to have them butt butted, butted up and straight. So I'm going to use my grid paper and I'm going to put it uh, along the bottom edge like that and make sure it's straight. And you can do two things. You can choose to trim them off as you go or choose or trim them off all at once. And I'm going to trim them off. I'm going to try and trim them off all at once. I'm going to try and keep this side as flush. I will, tr I will trim off a little bit on that side, but I'm not going to, um, it'll be less work. So, and I, if I, if you can see that down here, I wasn't straight down here. So I have to make, be better at this and just butt it up and make sure that they're butted beside each other. All right. And, and now you're just going to keep going and you're going to watch me do this. And I hope, and so Emily, tell me how you're doing, everything good with you. Um, and then we're going to do the daffodil delight and anyone else is that that's on say hi. And there's others that are on, but they're shy. They haven't said hi. A daffodil delight. And then, and then we're doing a uh, daffodil delight and then melon mambo. And again, we're going to do gra gorgeous grape. And now we're going to do coastal cabana that like that and now we're going to do granny apple green again this is such a 
don't know, just a, a happy card. Uh, when she, when this was one of the ones that she made in in the in the uh, in our paid for event, and I just loved it because it's so happy. I'm just going to yeah, lift it up a bit. Uh, Kimberly O'Brien, hello, Kimberly O'Brien from South Carolina. Hello, we are playing with. What are we playing with? Well, it's called Taco Fiesta, Kimberly. And I love this stamp set. And in case you're new, just starting watching, I did a paid uh, an event, just demonstrator event with Erica, who created, this is her million dollar stamp set. And this was one of the cards that she made at the event. And I loved it. I thought it was such a cute card. So here you'll see at the top, we're a little high, but that, uh, uh, we're going to go a little over. That's okay. Just make sure you got it sealed down. And now we've got this type of thing. And I'm just going to get out my scissors. They're, and they're all probably gunged up. And I am going to trim. I to trim the edges. You can, if you want, use your paper trimmer. Uh, but just be careful because your paper trimmer will get gunked up with um, adhesive. So I'm just going to use my scissors. Like this. All right, and then I'm going to go down on this side. This was, I mentioned this before, that I was so happy when I saw that this stamp set was carrying over in the new catalog, and I immediately knew that this was a class that I wanted to do in the mail. All right, and then we're gonna just trim across the top. I do not have that set, but it's cute. Great colors, and yeah, and it's not just great colors, but great use of using a way to use a cardstock as well. Because we all have these little bits and pieces of cardstock hanging around that um, I know I do have a drawer full. It took me almost two weekends to purge, get rid of all my old stock, and, and organize my cardstock, etc. It was nice to finally have it done. And uh, start fresh. Okay, so here is, and you know, before I go any further, I am now going to run this through the stamp and cotton emboss machine. As I mentioned, as I'll mention this again, I'm using the Stylish Shapes die, the second largest one. And if I'm going to give you any tip or any piece of advice, is make sure your plates are fairly clean and don't have a lot of scuff marks because you'll see here uh, I have dirt on my plate obviously but see all these marks when I first did the first the first card it's got all these marks on here and I don't like it it doesn't it doesn't look great so the cleaner your plate the better so I'm just going to go get my machine and because we've got two layers, we've got the basic white and we've got all the cardstock on top. We are going to run it uh, back and forth a couple of times. And I'm just gonna gauge it like that. Oops, I'm just gonna gauge it like that. And I'm going to put the plate on top. It's a fairly clean plate and run it through. And I will run it through a couple of times. If we had to use the basic white thick cardstock as the base, it would have um, been a bit even thicker and harder to go through the, the die. You know, I'm sitting, I'm sitting here in my craft room and uh, it was a nice day today and the heat's not on, but neither is the air conditioner and it's kind of hot in here <laughs> oh so there you go you'll see how clean how it how clean it is i do have some little bits of fluff on there i'll just wipe it off there we go but i don't have all of the scratch marks that i did from the plate and you can save that you can use that it's a really pretty would be nice accent piece for another card actually i do have a idea for that so i'm going to put that aside all right so there is the card now i want to make sure that i'm using up as many stamps as i have so here is the spectacular and i'm going to use the versa mark and i'm going to stamp along here and it's just going to be tone on tone 
and it really doesn't matter if it's not straight because it's tone on tone so I'm just going to stamp off on either side so I stamped one in the middle and then two on either side and now I'm going to stamp on either side and I'll bring it up and show you guys some colors it shows up better than others uh, the card that Erica did she used oh which one was it um, sentimental sayings, I think it was, and she used the Yahoo, and it was cute too. But I wanted to make use of all the stamps that are in this set, and so this was a perfect way to use the spectacular, spectacular, and full on. And just I'm just um, sort of doing it off center, like so that they're not right on uh, aligned up perfectly. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So you'll see it's spectacular and it's just all over. I didn't do it at the top. If you wanted to, you could put it at the top, but the top was a little bit narrow. All right. And now what we're going to do is, as I mentioned, this is going to get popped up on here. But if we stamp on here and use the blends, it will bleed through on the back. And, and I don't like that. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to stamp on, uh, we're going to actually stamp on here. And you know, I am going to trim that down a bit. I'm going to trim this down because I don't need it the same size as the other. So I'm going to trim it down to uh, three and three quarters, taking off a half an inch. And five uh no uh and four and that way i don't have to worry about it showing underneath i'm going to take it off another little bit here so i'm going to take off there we go i'll, I'll measure this for you and tell you how much i made it so it is three and a half by four and three quarters and that way, if it's not straight, it doesn't matter because it's not the same size as the one on top. Okay, so now I'm going to stamp in here all of the, all of the uh, candies and the swirls. And I'm going to do that in the black memento. And I'm just going to do it randomly in here and then we'll measure it. You can, if you want, use um, a pencil to mark it, but I'm just going to live dangerously. And I am going to use my paper piercing mat because it's a uh, photopolymer and you really have a, a better, better stamped image. And oops, I did a very, very bad job with that one. Let's see. Yeah, you won't notice. Oh, is that enough? I'm going to do another one up here. There we go. What do you think? That's good? That's good. And now I'm taking colors that are in the paper. So I am going to use Daffodil Delight. And yeah, some of my Daffodil Delight is, is dying on me and I got to toss them out. So I got to bring them all out. And I am going to use the Parakeet Party because that's a nice vibrant color. And I'm not going to use the gorgeous great but I am going to use I think Highland Heather because it's a brighter and there we go Highland Heather and I think let me get that card out again I think that's it okay so now let's just randomly I'm going to use the bright ones I'm going to be coloring uh, random uh, candies and just make sure you get them all. First card I did, I even colored the swirls and it was too much. I'll show you, I'll show you the card again to show you what I mean. So I'm just looking for bright, happy, happy colors. And like that, oops. And let's see, yeah, I'll do this one as well. Now I'm talking to myself and now I'm gonna use the Daffodil Delight. 
You can make, add in as many colors as you want and any combination. And, and let's see, I like the granny apple green again. Oh, not granny apple green, um, parakeet party. And here. And I'm going to do this one. And like some more purple. And some yellow. Uh, no, yellow here. I'm going to do this one in yellow. And this one, I'm almost done. And then um, this one again, the green. I don't care as long as it's the combination, as long as they're nice, bright, happy colors. And, and I get them all. And here and here. Do I have them all? Let's see. I'll put this down here. Uh, no, I got to get this one. And yellow. And I think, what do you think? I think that's it, right guys? I think that's good. All right. And now I am going to mount this onto here and keep it in the middle. See what I mean about when you color it, it pops through the back. Mm, I don't like that. Uh, to me, the card has to be clean on the inside. Like that, and then that will pop up like that. So we need lots of dimensionals. And if you don't want saggy bottoms, make sure you've got um, dimensionals that are holding the sides up so that it doesn't sag on you. And yes, I think this is a uh, leftover from a paper pumpkin kit. Okay. And then it's going to get popped up like that. Have, uh, I know Emily uh, is a demonstrator, so she has seen the online catalog. Have you seen it, Kimberly? I don't have my, my demonstrator copy yet. I did get my order in. Um, I ordered some to have it in the house, but... I was happy. I was happy. I needed to see the color refresh. I needed to see new product. Oh, Elizabeth, you're, are you drinking? I'm not drinking, I promise. So I'm snipping this off because it's not straight. I knew that as soon as I laid it down. I'm just snipping off the backs of the, of some of them. Yes, you have seen it. And what did you think? Did you love it? That's a, that's a kind of a leading question. Sorry, guys. I was not straight. I have to do this over again. I'm sure this has happened to you before. Sometimes I have to stand up when I, when I put a card together uh, so that I can see it from overhead. I put in a pre-order. I am going to get them tomorrow. Excellent. Yeah, I, um, I expedited because we had a, a long weekend here. I'm in Canada and we had a long weekend. So I expedited and it came on Thursday, but I never played with it because I wanted to get this class sorted out. Um, and I know some, some Canadian demonstrators are not happy right now because uh, they placed the order on April 1st and they still don't have it and it still hasn't shipped. Um, so that's, uh, I heard, I don't know if this is true or not, but somebody said, I think April 1st was their highest one day sale um, in the history of Stampin' Up. That's what somebody had mentioned. I, I don't know that for a fact, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised because they had the retiring sale, they had everything going at once. So it, it was very, very hectic. Okay, now I'm gonna start, attempt this one more time, folks. 
Viewers came Friday. Hey, Bev, how are you? Oh, you heard that too, Kimberly? Yeah, that it was their highest one day sale ever um, at Stampin' Up, which is like, whoa. That says a lot. So no wonder they were backlogged. And I think a lot of people, because they want their toys, right? They expedite. I'll show you the card in a second, Bev. Thanks for joining in. Okay, so I'm going to stand up, guys. You're going to see my pajamas, but I need to stand up so that I can make sure that I have this uh, and not hit the camera, which I just did. Sorry. There we go. That's better. There we go. Okay, so that's that's the card. Now, we're not done, though. So I'm going to take my piece of scrap white and I'm going to take the pinata and my black memento and I'm going to stamp this and color it and fussy cut it. I know, fussy cutting. Um, you know, I did this card on the weekend and I, ha I had to do multiples because it had ink all over me. So how about I color this first? And how did I color it? So I'm going to use Poppy Parade, Light Poppy Parade for the nose and the ears. And again, uh, just happy. That, that's, that's the only word I have is just make it happy. And I'm going to use um, this one for here. I know we don't have Poppy Parade in the cardstock color, but it's, the red is cute. You could have also used Melon Mambo if you wanted. And on this one, I'm going to color, making sure you can see me. Uh, in here. And I'm going to color one of the tails. I find it easier to go from the bottom up because the tails are um, small, thin. And Poppy. Uh, parakeet party here. Oh, and I'm going to put the necklace parakeet party, whatever your little heart desires. And the daffodil delight. Oh, I used the dark. Oh, well. And I'm going to do one here like this. And I just noticed I missed one of these. And oh, I'll use Parakeet Party up here, and what what color did I use? Poppy Parade. Oh, Highland Heather. And like that. Okay. All right, so there is the pinata. And now I am going to just fussy cut it out. It would have been nice if there were dies to go with this, but the other three cards that I made using this set, uh, I've cut fussy cut everything and they all look cute. They all worked just fine. So it may be fiddly to fussy cut, but it's not intricate or detailed cutting that you have to do. And so I just going back to give credit where credit is due. This was a class that I attended, a Canadian demonstrator, Alison Akamitsu, um, put the class on and it was for can uh, Canadian demonstrators and she had guest speakers and Erica Serwin was one of the guest speakers and our presenters I should say and she focused on her million dollar stamp set and that's where this project came from and it it's super cute actually the project all the projects that she made for um, Allison's event were originals and uh, they were all really cute just goes to show the versatility of one little stamp set because the cards were all different. And there we go. Uh, did you say this set is the, yes, it's, um, no, it's not a friend of mine. It's, uh, well, I've met Erica, uh, Erica Serwin. She's an, a U.S. demonstrator, but uh, Allison is a Canadian demonstrator and she every quarter has a demonstrator event. And she always has guest speakers and uh oh what's what's low battery sorry guys what's low battery ha huh. it's plugged in though i don't know it's plugged in though so i'm not sure why it's saying low battery um 
so that I might have to stamp quickly. So now I'm going to take the tw baker's twine. Yes, yeah, so Allison uh, uh, had Erica Serwin teach this uh, and showcase her million dollar set at, at the event, which was really cute. Okay, so now I'm going to put a uh, blue dot on the back here like this. And I'm going to put some dimensionals on here. I thought that was, oh, no, it was mine. And I don't, like, it's plugged in and it should be charging, um, which is really odd. So I don't know why it's not charging. Um, like I said, uh, technology. Oh, my gosh, guys, technology, technology, technology. I Every time I go live now, I have to make sure I reboot everything, which I did never thinking that it would um, run out of juice when it's plugged in. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take another glue dot and I'm gonna at attach it up here. Like that. Oops. Like this, you wanna make sure it's taut. Like that, and I'm going to cut this off. Now, if I was a really good demonstrator, I would have measured it correctly. But, you know, sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. And now I'm just going to tie a little knot. I really do like this baker's twine and this color with it. Um, and this is retired. I'm not sure if it's even available still, but because it was on the retirement list. Uh, so I'm not sure if it's around still, but I had it. And since it's avail around until the end of May, Technically, it's not retired yet. And now just another glue dot. And I am going to put it down there like that and then trim off the edges. And now, like that, so that's like that. I'm going to take my Wink of Stella. And I don't know if anyone else has issue with Wink of Stella sometimes, but I do. I have it, an issue with it puddling on me. So <clears throat> I always do it on here and then color. And because I like it nice and sparkly. And because everything needs everything needs some sparkle. Okay, so Wink of Stella. And then I'm taking my strip of black of uh, cardstock. And again, I think it's half inch. It's a cutoff from a matting mat that you do. And <clears throat> Uh, post-it note and I'm going to take my holy guacamole and I'm going to cover up the bottom that says it's your birthday I find the cheap the cheap post-it notes don't work it, if the, I've gotten them from the dollar store and they fall off so holy guacamole I'm going to take that off stamp there like that there we go holy guacamole and I am going to just trim this off and put it aside because to let it dry a little bit because I have a habit of wearing black memento. I'm cleaning off the stamp. Cleaning off the stamp, I'm drying the stamp. And I'm getting rid of that post-it note. I know, what a waste of post-it notes. And now I'm going to stamp, it's your birthday. And so I'm gonna take the stamp, make sure it's nice and dry. And another post-it note. Okay, folks, we're a little there. Post-it note. And this time, I'm going to cover up the holy guacamole. I love the pun sayings. Holy guacamole. And then take off that. That's important to take it off. And then stamp, it's your birthday, like that. And then what I'm going to do is I got a piece of scrap white. I know I had scrap white. Here it is. I'm going to take the guacamole dish, right? And I am going to stamp that. I'm, I'm rushing because I'm, I'm afraid that my phone is going to run out of battery. 
um, post-it brand only get annoyed where work people think they are saving money buying off. Oh my gosh. I've made, tried so many cards, especially doing this and the post-it note falls off if you don't use the post-it note brands. Okay. So I'm going to stamp the guacamole and I'm coloring it in the crumb cake and my crumb cake. Oh, it's, it's, it's lost its luster. I have a whole bunch of, um, blends that I have to uh, re replace and, and I'm just going to color in the dish and then using the granny apple green light and dark and again I'm doing this on a scrap piece of paper instead of stamping it right on the card because it will bleed through and I oh I did it the other way around oh it doesn't matter it will bleed through and I don't want it to bleed through and I'm going to trim this. And then if you're doing the class, I'm going to show you a technique on how to make ta realistic looking tacos and with wa the watercolor paper. And I've got some of the watercolor paper already done. And I'm just going to um, stamp some tacos and cut them and put them in with the, with the, um, guacamole. This is a terrible cut job. So there's the guacamole dish. And I am going to glue that down there like that. And let's have a bet if I'm going to be able to, to get uh, my Tombow out. Oh, oh, a little bit, a little bit. Let me do this here. No. There we go. That's better. And I need my tweezers. Like this. Come on. Like that. And I'm going to put the guacamole in there. Because you know it's holy guacamole. So you have to have guacamole on the card. So there's the guacamole. And then using my watercolor paper and some embossing and some water, water um, painting, some water painting with yellows, I've got uh, this and texture. And where's my stamp set? I thought I kept the guacamole out. I mean, the taco chips out. So here are the little taco chips. You really should um, stamp it first and then do all of the the, uh, the embossing, but I'm going to do it this way. It's a really small, like that. And a little bit more fussy cutting. These two are together. And we're just going to fussy cut them out. This is a bit thicker because it's done in the watercolor paper. Da, 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 da. Chat amongst yourselves while I'm fussy cutting. It's like watching paint dry, folks, watching someone fussy cut. And then one more. There we go. And I'm going to put these two like that. Like I said, I, this is my boss's birthday was on uh, last weekend. And this is the card I made. I thought it turned out cute. Here we have to hold those down. And then here is the last piece of tortilla chip. And I'm just going to put it, oh, how do I want it? I uh, like that. So it's a cluster of tortilla chips. There you go. Holy guacamole. What do you think, guys? I thought it turned out cute. I like this ribbon compared to the metallic ribbon. So that's the metallic ribbon. I was looking for ribbon that was thin. Um, I thought this might 
go with that. I tried the green and it didn't really go. So then I tried other colors, but I still think I like this ribbon better. This, this uh, Baker's twine. Like I said, this is retiring. I'm, I should have checked the inventory status report to see if it was still around, but I'm not sure if it is. I think it was a really good deal too, if it was on sale. That's the card. And look, my phone didn't die on me, which is a good thing, guys. So again, I'm thanking Allison Okamitsu, who uh, had the class. It was just for Canadian demonstrators. And uh, for Erica Serwin for presenting at the class. And this was one of her projects. And uh, I like to give credit where credit is due. Hope you guys like that. I really like all of the twine and ribbon. Me too. I like all the twine and ribbons and everything. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, that was 45 minutes. That's a little bit longer than normal, but um, I hope you like it. You know, I may even be playing with this stamp set again next week so that I want to share with you. My goal is to uh, show you the versatility of a stamp set. And uh, I know that uh, I want to get my money's worth out of stamps that I buy. And uh, I'm strategic these days with, with, what I, with what I purchase. Before I used to just purchase what I loved and then when the retirement comes, I didn't use them. So uh, I have a big bucket of retirement and some of them weren't even inked up. So I have to do better with my purchases and make sure that I actually do something with them. All right, ladies, have a great evening, and I appreciate you stamping, uh, stamping or stamping, joining in with me today and uh, following along and, um, and your support. It's greatly appreciated. I, uh, I thank you very much for all of your support. Uh, I like the dollhouse in the background. Oh, oh thank you. That, I'm, a, I'm a crafter. I, I made that dollhouse when I was in my 20s, 20, 30, 40, 50, 40 years ago. <laughs> And I still have it. So it was, um, it was a Michael's, it was a Michael's dollhouse many, many years ago. And I bought it and put it together and it's wired. It's got wallpaper in it. It's got a porcelain bathroom. It's got a nicer, nicer bathroom than I have, <laughs> but I won't get rid of it. All right. Take care, everybody. And we will talk to you again next week. Happy stamping. As always, take care.